So here we are with the C20 controller. It has been configured to control a video hub with these buttons. We have shift state, uh, the default register and register uh, B, uh, sorry, register A set up on these two keys. This one will set a shift register A for the encoder up here. This one will uh, cycle through level zero, one and two uh, for the default register and affect how the video hub routing is done down here. And in this video, we will look at states. So we have shift levels and states, and they are sort of the same, but shift levels are nested inside of states. And it should be clear in this video how states would um, normally be used on a Skahoy controller and how you would kind of uh, choose the one or the other paradigm for setting up your controller. And in this case, I would like to add a new device core to the C20. So I have loaded the configuration at coreskahoy.com. I'll press add devices. I'll add a new device, scroll down to ATEM, save settings, go back to my controller configuration page. And uh, now I'm free to add ATEM actions. Let's just quickly see. We see that we have a lot of uh, Blackmagic ATEM actions in the action list now, I can choose from. We also need to make sure we get it configured with the correct IP address. So make sure you enable the ATEM switcher at the bottom of the screen, like this, with the IP address it has on your network. So now that this is done, I will explain you what I would like to do. I wish for these four buttons that currently um, routes inputs to output one on the video hub to be able to change to routing um, sources on an ATEM switcher to the auxiliary one. And now I will do something and explain it afterwards. I will change the number of states this controller can be in from two or from one to two, and then I will name them video hub actions. Oh, sorry, video hub. Oh, maybe just video hub and then atom. And I'll save and you'll now see the difference in the interface. So we have two columns. The first column contains all the actions that we knew from before. So how we set up the shift keys, how we set up the routing uh, keys and so on. While we have another column called atom and we see nothing over here. So the trick is that the states, we have two states now. We have the default state, video hub. We have the uh, state number one called ATEM. And we can bring the controller from this state over to this state and back again in the same way we set up shift levels. So let's pick a key to do this. We'll take this one, C, and then we scroll to the system actions and we choose state. So with this key set to state, I'll set it up so that it chooses state number one whenever I press this. So I choose toggle. So it now goes from state zero to one, back to zero to one again, and so forth. What I will also do now is go to key one, two, three, and four, and assign them to control the ATEM switcher when they are in this state. So I add an action to route an input to auxiliary one. The input I want would be, I'll just take number one. Then I will copy paste it to the other keys. Really convenient feature using the insert function. And normally you just have to change a single parameter when you do this kind of copy paste. Save the settings, and we should now be able to explore the new changes by checking for updates to our controller. So now the controller has rebooted after being written with the new firmware we just generated. And this contains all the changes we made. So we see the new button we specified has uh, the label state atom. And as I press it, you see a change to the lower four buttons. They are now uh, filled with information for uh, camera one, two, three, and four, which are the inputs. We can route them to 
auxiliary one on the ATEM switcher. When we are in that state, I press this again and we go back to routing the video hub. Now, there's one thing that uh, concerns me because what about the shift states when I'm in the, uh, um, sorry, the shift levels here when I'm in the ATEM state because they actually play no role. And uh, you could also say that it's irrelevant that the encoder button, which are still re um, referring back to the video hub is enabled. So what are we gonna do about that? And that gives me a chance to talk about how um, we can understand the controller's uh, behavior in terms of, of what happens when this field is blank. And obviously what happens is when you do not specify anything, it will fall back to the default behavior. So since this is empty, we still have a shift key. And the way to deal with that, if we want to disable the shift keys in this case, is to add another system action called no action, which we can then repeatedly copy, copy, this is the copy button, and then paste to everywhere we want to exclude functionality. So we go down to the encoder one as well, and we say when we are in the ATEM state, no, we don't want the encoder to do anything. So we insert. And obviously you can imagine that instead of just disabling it, you could also assign it to interesting functionality for the ATEM switch instead. So we save these settings and the result will be that we um, now see these buttons having their uh, functionality removed in the ATEM state. So the conclusion from what I just said is that whenever we do not have anything for a particular other state, it's gonna fall back to the default. So how is that going to play out when you have more than just two states? And I'll test that idea. So we are changing the number of states to three and maybe we call this auxiliary instead of ATEM and we call this PGM. So my intention here is that um, the states auxiliary and PGM will, the auxiliary state will obviously still um, route sources to auxiliary out, but otherwise I want these buttons here to uh, select sources on the ATEM program. So we're just gonna pick the same sources. We can now do the same trick, making it quick and easy to set up four buttons like this, and we press save settings. So the new firmware is almost written, but before we look at how the controller reacts to this new firmware, I would like to just quickly make a correction or let you know about a correction I did to the configuration before I actually loaded it. Um, I forgot to change the button C so that it would also set state two. I could do that in the same manner. I just did it for shift levels by cycling up, but instead I added a second key that simply sets state number two, and that's the toggle switch as well. So in other words, I now have two keys, these two keys, where the, this one will set the auxiliary state, this one will set the program state, and when I press them again, they fall back to the default state, which was the video hub routing. And we can already now see, as I press this one, that I disabled the function of the two shift keys and the encoder knob, so that's gone. And we also see that, well, this is unchanged. That was as we did it um, before. So when I press this one, we now see that the lower row will take up the functions I specified for the PGM state, and I'm now switching sources on the ATEM switcher connected. I brought up the software for this one, so you can actually see it. As I press the buttons, it's changing sources on program for the ATEM switcher. And if you wanna see, go back to the auxiliary state, you also see how the auxiliary one sources are changed. But in the program state, we now see the shift functions and the, 
recall function or the function with the different preset banks for the video hub are still active. And that gives me a chance to tell you about how the fallback system works. So if we um, go to the shift key, you obviously see that I did not specify any action to the program state for this key. And the fallback methodology is just like for shift levels. It will go back to the default state right there. If no action is specified, it goes back to the default. It does not go back to the previous state if you think that it's kind of going from right to left. In that case, it would hit the no action for the auxiliary state. But this is not how it works. If no action is specified for any state other than the default, it will fall back to the default state. And again, as I had to do for the auxiliary state, I will simply insert the no action action to compensate for the fact that it does not make sense to do adjustments to the video hub when we are in these two states.